right, so on the videos, I don't know if you can hear the weed whacker going right now, but it is pretty loud. And all right, we're going to do section 11.5. If Again, if you're watching the video, this PDF of the sheet that we're going to be referring to is right next to the module for this video, so you can tune you can tune in. What we're going to be talking about in section 11.5, we're continuing to talk about probability. We are going to talk about uh, compound probability. And specifically, we're going to talk about or events and and events. I don't love that these two things are in the same section just because uh, they have kind of different uh, different starting points. So I've got on the sheet how we calculate the probability of, of an or event, meaning this could happen or something else could happen. So here's the probability, and you don't need to write anything down, or if you want to, that helps you remember. If we're going to find the probability of event A happening or event B happening, now the thing that I do want you to write down is that when we're doing an or event, the context of an or event is we are doing one trial. So we're drawing one card or one thing is happening, and we want to know when that one thing happens, is it event A or event B? So I'm just going to make a little note that when we do this, this is one trial. This is why I don't really love that the and events are in here, because when we get when we talk about these and events right here, these are multiple trials. Like I'm going to do two or three things back to back to back, and I want to know the probabilities uh, going on. So the probability of event A happening or B happening. Now, we might remember this from um, when we talked about sets and we talked about the cardinality. And uh, just to refresh your memory, just with a real quick sketch, if you remember our Venn diagram, and here's our here's our things, and we talked about we talked about this, and I said this is the one thing from the sets that will probably carry forward. So whether or not you remember, we talked about the number of elements in the union. If you, I don't know if you remember, so I don't get A, B, C, D, E, F, I, J, whatever. Something out there. And we talked about the number of elements in the union. And if you remember, the union is everything in both. And so at the time, we said, well, to find the number of elements in the union, you count up the number of elements in A, and then you count up the number of elements in B. But then what did we notice happen when we counted up the number of elements? What did we do twice? Yeah, you count the stuff in the middle. So we had to subtract the number of things uh, in the intersection of those two things. So this probability looks very similar because it's based on the same thing. When I figure out the probability of A or B, I first find the probability of event A happening. Then I add in the probability of event B happening. And then I subtract, just like we did for the Venn diagram, I subtract the probability of A and B happening at the same time. Now, again, this is why I don't like doing both of these things in the same section. This and right here is different than the and we're going to talk about in the second half of this section. So make a little note right here that this and is the two events happening at the same time. So this is for the or. Yes, this is our or. We have not talked about an and event. I will try to make really clear the difference between this and event that we're going to talk about and this and right here. And so again, I'll just repeat this and here that's part of our calculating the or is these two things happening at the same time. It's the intersection of the two events. So given that, now we have some examples that have been typed out for us so that there's less writing. Example one says this. So example one says one card is selected. So the key here is notice it says one card. So you can circle the words one card. That's uh, how you know that this is or event. It's uh, the and events we do later are going to be two or more things are happening. So one card is selected from a standard deck of playing cards, determine the, prop, the following. So I want to find the probability of an ace or a nine. 
Okay, so I'm just going to write out to practice and help me remember my or uh, my or formula here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the probability that I draw an ace with that one card plus the probability that I draw a nine with that card minus the probability that an ace and a nine happen at the same time. So at this point, though, if you've taken my advice, when we did section one, I said, please, we just made we, we, we I took the whole class period to talk about section one It was probably way too much time to talk about basic probability, but I wanted you to get really comfortable calculating probabilities because now each of these is just a basic probability. So the probability of an ace in our standard deck, do, do you remember how many aces there are in the standard deck of cards? There's four. And how many cards are there in the standard deck of cards? 52, exactly right. Okay, plus, how many nines are there in the standard deck of cards? Four out of how many cards? 52 minus, okay, now here's uh, this first one. Here's uh, an interesting question. Can an ace and a nine happen at the same time when I'm drawing one card? No. No, you're one or the other. Okay, so there are zero cards that have an ace and a nine printed out of 52. Now I want to make a little note right below this example. There's the words mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive is the math term when you refer to some uh, when you refer to two events that cannot happen at the same time. Okay, so mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive refers to two events that cannot happen at the same time. So this first example I picked, I picked two mutually exclusive events. When I draw one card from a deck, it is impossible for it to be both an ace and a nine. That's why it's mutually exclusive. So if you ever use the words mutually exclusive, two things are mutually exclusive, it means that they can't happen at the same time. All right, let's finish this problem up. Four out of 52 plus four out of 52. Remember adding fractions when we have the like denominators, four and four is eight out of 52. And remember probability, you either reduce the fraction. You, If you use your calculator, make it a decimal, make sure to round to the third or fourth decimal place. I will give you very clear instructions on the test of what I want. Okay, I think you've told me my math lab wants to reduce fraction. So when I reduce this by four, four goes into eight two times, and four goes into 52 13 times. So there's two chances out of 13 that I will draw either an ace or a nine. So if you would now do for me the next one, uh, the probability of an ace or a heart. Yes. Um, so if you would like to type in something that has an interior speaker, it doesn't really change the problem at all. Doesn't change the problem at all. Okay. No, I just picked that as my first example because I didn't want to forget to define mutually exclusive for you. That's really the that's the whole thought process of me doing that right away. So do the B part. What's the probability of an ace or a heart? And these are not mutually exclusive. So you will have to think about the and. Uh, how many times does this happen at the same time?
All right, so this problem, we're finding the probability that when I select one card from a deck of cards, I want the probability that it's either an ace or a heart. So I have just, again, used the formula. We're going to find the probability of an ace. We're going to find the probability of a heart. Then we're going to subtract the probability that the ace and the heart can happen at the same time when I draw one card. So again, we've already seen this over here. The probability of an ace is four out of 52. How many hearts are there in the deck of cards? Does anyone remember? 13. There's 13 out of 52 minus, okay, so here's what we've done on this one. These two are not mutually exclusive. When we counted the ace, aces, the ace of hearts was in there. When we counted the hearts, the ace of hearts was in there. So we've counted that card twice. So I have to subtract all the times ace and heart happens. And, and how many cards have both the ace and the heart? One. One out of 52, yes. Okay, so we've counted that one twice. We had to take care of that. So four plus 13 is 17. 17 minus one is 16 out of 52. And again, reducing the fraction, four goes into 16 four times, four goes into 52 13 times. So there's four chances out of 13 out of doing that. Do the next one, probability of red or black. All are catching on to my purpose for asking the question. Yeah, they're so pretty. You don't want to mess them up, right? All right, so probability of a red card or a black card, that's the probability that I select a red plus the probability I select a black minus the probability that these two things happen at the same time. So red cards, there are 26 out of 52. Black cards, there are 26 out of 52. So you all that have the intuition that isn't that all the cards? Yes, because what's the probability that they happen at the same time? You're not answering, you're, you're a step ahead of me. The question, red and black, if I pull one card, can it be both at the same time? No, no this is another example of what kind of event? Yeah. Mutually exclusive, yes. That's why I gave it in addition to the idea of 26 plus 26 is 52 out of 52. That equals, when I reduce that, one. And what does it mean when I have a probability of one? 100%, that means it has to happen, yes. So that was you all that said, hey, is that every possibility? You are 100% right. All right, do the last one right there, the last or problem for the standard deck of cards, please. It's the probability of a picture card or a red card. The picture cards, remember, I, I uh, described the deck of cards to you on uh, the first day, but the picture cards, remember the jack to queen, the king of each of the suits.
All right, on this one here, the probability of a picture card or red, that's what I asked for. So the probability of a picture card plus the probability of a red card minus the probability that these two things happen at the same time. Again, we're drawing one card out of the deck. That is the that is the context of our or problem. So how many picture cards are there? Well, out of the 52, yes. Reds is half of the deck, 26 out of 52. How many cards do we double count? Six. Six of them. Yeah, we counted the Jack, Queen, the King of Hearts, and then the Jack, Queen, the King of Diamonds. We've counted those. We counted the picture cards. We counted those. We counted the red cards. So we have to subtract six out of 52. Those are the ones we're double counting. We doing okay. Does anyone have a question about how my or problems are working? Because I have another, uh, uh, you see on the page, I have another picture, a few more problems. But once you get the or problems, there's there's really no thing I can do any different to make your life miserable. Uh, so 12 and 26 is 38, minus 6 is 32 out of 52. Again, if you use a calculator, that's great. I'm going to reduce 4 goes into 32 8 times, 4 goes into 52 13 times. So eight times out of 13, you are going to get a picture card or a red card. Okay, so we are changing decks of cards just to, just to make sure that we, we feel comfortable with this. So example two, I've given you a new deck of 20 cards with different pictures and different numbers on it. So do the A problem. What's the probability of a lion or an even number? Yeah, just, just go ahead and do A and we'll yeah, I'll give time for each of them. All right, so here goes. How many lions do I have in that deck? Five. So the probably I pick a lion is five out of 20. Would everybody agree with that? Five lions out of 20 cards. Okay. How many even cards do I have or have in that deck? Okay, there's four twos and four fours, so that's eight out of 20. So if I was just doing each of those things individually, okay, the probability of a lion is five out of 20, the probability of an even is eight out of 20, minus how many have we double counted? How many even lions are there? Okay, there's two out of 20. Does everyone see where these numbers are coming from? Anyone have any consternation about the or events? So five plus eight, that is 13 minus two, that's 11 out of 20. That is already a reduced fraction. Go ahead and do the B problem. And if you have any question, please let me know. We're about to finish up the OR events and head to the next one. So if you have anything you need to talk about, let me know. All right, here goes. Probably the yellow bird or a number less than three. What's the probability that I draw a yellow bird out of this deck? Two, Two out of 20. 20. Yep. Plus, what's the probability I draw a number less than three? Eight. And then how many times do those things overlap? How many yellow birds that are less than three do I have? Yeah. So two and eight is 10, minus one is nine out of 20. Again, that's a reduced fraction. 
I'm just going to keep going with the problems. If you got a question, if something is just not clicking with you on this, please let me know. How about do the probability of a lion or a three? Okay, a lion or a three. So tell me, what's the probability that if I pick one of these cards at random, I am picking a lion? Yeah, I think, oh, no, we didn't just have that. Five out of 20, fantastic. Plus, what's the probability that I choose the number three out of this deck? Yeah, you're doing great. Hope everybody else is. And then what's the probability that I choose a lion and the number three at the same time? Wonderful. Five plus four is nine. Nine minus one is eight. Eight out of 20. This one can be reduced. I'm going to reduce by a factor of four. Four goes into eight two times. Four goes into 25 times. So two times out of five. Okay, I think we've just got two more right here. The next one is what's the probability of a red bird or an even number? And then if you want to go ahead, you seem to be knocking these off pretty quick. If I'm wrong on that, please let me know. Go ahead and do the E problem. What's the probability of a yellow bird or a frog? All right, so here we go. Let's finish these up. Probability of a red bird. The probability of a red bird is three out of 20. There's three of those. Even cards that we saw in a previous problem, there are eight of those out of 20. And is that are even, that happens once. So three plus eight is 11, minus one is 10 out of 20. And that is one half. We doing okay? Managing these pretty good. I can put some of these on the test. Hopefully, everybody will love them. Finally, last but not least, yellow bird or a frog. There are two yellow birds out of 20. So that's the probability there. There are five frogs out of 20. And then, how many times do yellow birds and frogs happen at the same time? None. Thank you. That was my next question. And then here we go two plus five is seven out of 20. Boom. Good. So mutually exclusive events. All right, so that we are done with the or events. Okay, well, let me mention this one more time before we talk about and events. When we're dealing with these or events, we are talking about one trial. On each of these questions, we've drawn one card, okay? Any problem you do that is an or problem in your homework will tell you you are doing one of something. You're rolling the die one time, you're whatever, okay? You're spinning the wheel once. So the and that you see as part of this is these two events happening at the same time. That is different than what we see next. Okay, what we see next is called an and event. And so in an and event, there is the, well, let me write this down. So we've got the probability now of A and B happening. Okay, so this is an and event. This has the implication and then we're 
we're doing more than one thing. So I am now saying I am going to do two of something or three or four or five, however many. I'm going to do two of something. What's the probability that A happens and then B happens after that? Okay, so we're talking about now two or more trials. Okay, so this is important. That's why I want to note it. Note it. This is two or more trials. So if when we're talking about decks of cards, which we will in just a minute, I am going to I'm going to tell you we're going to draw two cards from a deck. It's the first time we're doing this. Okay, we're going to draw uh, we're going to draw three cards from the deck, or we're going to spin the spinner three times. We're doing things more than once now. So the and means and then. There's order to this. Okay, super common. So example three is down at the bottom of the page. Okay, example three says two cards. You can circle that. That's important. Two cards are selected with replacement. Fun words right there. Two cards are selected with replacement from a standard deck of cards. What's the probability that I select two diamonds? Now, let me relate this to our and and tell you why this is an and. You don't, uh, if you want to write this on this first one, that's great. This is not a step that you have to write after this. But two diamonds means I have the probability that my first card, I'm just going to abbreviate, is a diamond. And then my second card is a diamond. That's why this is an and event. Okay, so I'm like, what's my probability that the first card I pull out is a diamond? And then the second card I pull out is a diamond. There is more than one thing happening. So the way we calculate that, I never, I guess, never finished my formula over here. I got all excited about telling you about what an AND event is. It's pretty simple. When you have an AND event, it's just the probability of the first thing times the probability of the second thing. If you're doing three things, then it be times the probability of the third. If you're doing nine things, you just keep multiplying and multiplying. Okay, so for this one, what's the probability of two diamonds? Well, what's the probability that the first card I pull out of the deck is a diamond? How many diamonds are there? 13 out of 52. Great. Notice I am doing this with replacement. So when you see the words with replacement, we spent time talking about this last time with tree diagrams. When I do something with replacement, what am I going to do with that card that I just drew out of the deck? I'm going to put it back. Okay, so now when I go to draw the second card, how many diamonds are in the deck? Out of perfect. Now, when I when I multiply fractions, I like to reduce first. It makes the numbers easier. Again, on the test, you are more than welcome to go ahead and use decimals, use your calculator. Thirteen out of fifty-two. Thirteen goes into fifty-two four times. So each of these fractions is really one fourth. And then, if you remember your arithmetic, multiplying fractions means you just go straight across the top, straight across the bottom. So one times one in the top is one. Four times four in the bottom is sixteen. I'm going to flip the page. I'm going to do the next example along with you, and then I have uh, then you're you're going to have a bunch of problems that we're going to do to practice these and events. Okay, so here goes. Example four says we're going to repeat the preceding example, but this time we're going to do it without replacement to see the difference. So example four. I want to know again what's the probability of two diamonds. One more time, I'm going to write this. Uh, if you want me to write it for others, I will, but this is not a required step. So two diamonds means what's the probability of a diamond and then another diamond? Well, once again, the first part, you already, you've already answered. What's the probability of the first card I draw out of the deck is a diamond? Exactly, 13 out of 52, okay, times now. Remind me, because we talked about these words last time, if I do something without replacement, I'm holding that card in my hand, that diamond in my hand, what do I do with that card? I keep it, I eat it, I throw it away, but I do not put it back in the deck of cards, okay? So now, thought experiment. When I go to draw the next card, how many diamonds are left in the deck? I drew one out. Okay, we're assuming here that this one happened, right? There's 13 diamonds. I drew one of the diamonds out. 
So now I take it, I've looked, oh, it's a diamond, cool. And then I burn it. How many diamonds are left in the deck now? 12, okay. How many cards are left in the deck now? There you go, great job, excellent. Yes, that's what this means. So the probably when we're doing diamond and a diamond, we're assuming when we calculate this probably that we got the diamond. Okay, that's why it's 13 out of 52. All right, again, uh, I would I would use the calculator, but I know in my math lab that's not necessarily an option. So 13 out of 52 reduces to one out of four, 12 out of 52. I think three goes into both. Three goes into 12 four times, three goes into 51, uh, one 17 times. My fours will cancel. That's one out of 17. You'll see right below example four, there's the term independent, or excuse me, independent events. Okay. So we've got two events happening. In this case, the two diamonds, the probability of drawing a diamond did not change when I did it with replacement. When the probability of a first event does not affect the second, those are called independent events. So, uh, the independent, what that means is when the first thing is happening, does not affect the probability of the second. Okay, those are called independent events. The probability of drawing a diamond is 13 out of 52. So that did not change when I did it with replacement. Over here, when the probability of a first thing does affect the probability of the second thing happening, this the probability of the diamond changed when I selected my first diamond. These are called dependent events. Okay, so independent is when the probability does not change from one uh, occurrence to the next. The dependent events are when the probability does change going from one occurrence to the next. All right, so what I would like you to do, we are going to use a standard deck of cards. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I should read the instructions for the problems that I created for you. Example five says use the deck of cards from example two, those 20 cards with the frogs and the uh, all the fun things on it. Uh, use that deck of cards. If two cards are selected with replacement, find the following probability. So go ahead and do those four problems. Okay, find those four probabilities doing it with replacement.
All right, so and events. Here we go. The first one says, what's the probability that I draw two threes? So what that means is, uh, what's the probability I draw a three on the first draw and then a three on the second? So it's an and event, two consecutive things. We remember we're doing these each of these problems with replacement. So what's the probability that I draw a three on my first draw? Okay, four out of 20. I replace the card, I shuffle them all up again. What's the probability I draw a three on the second one? Yep, thank you for answering my silly questions. And then four out of 20, four out of 20, uh, reducing four goes into 25 times. So this is one fifth and one fifth. And when you multiply that, that's one out of 25. Or if you made a decimal, it's 0.04, one of those two. A lion and then a monkey. So the probability of a lion, we've done that a couple times, is five out of 20. I replace the card. I draw again. What's the probability I get a monkey with the second one? Again, another five out of 20. Okay, so five out of 20, five out of 20, each of those reduces to one out of four. And then when I multiply, that's one out of 16. Anybody getting different numbers? Are you seeing where my numbers are coming from? You doing all right? I know you're tired, I get it. It's almost the weekend. Maybe you didn't eat breakfast, who knows? We'll make it though. We'll make it, we've got 35 more minutes. Probably have a frog and then a yellow bird. So our frog, like the others is five out of 20 and I replace it and then a yellow bird. There are two yellow birds out of 20. So five out of 20 reduces to one out of four, two out of 20 is one out of 10. So that is one chance out of 40 that you'll do that. And then finally, both even. So what's the probability of an even card with the first draw, even card with the second? There are eight even cards out of 20 times. I put the card back. There are eight more even cards out of 20. And so eight out of 20 reduces to, uh, let's see, two out of five. And so that is two times two is four, five times five is 25. When we do this next, we're gonna go back and do these same four problems. This time though, we are not gonna do replacement. We are gonna do it without replacement. I give you permission to go ahead, way easier. That's what, uh, that's what I would do. So go back, this is example six on the sheet. Go back and do each of these four problems again, but this time you're doing it without replacing the card you've drawn. Uh, let's go to the fourth because some of these. Uh, will be a little smaller, I think.
right, let's get started on these. Uh, see how you did calculating because the probability of the second event is going to change now. These are all dependent events. So the probability of two, three. So our first probability from the first time around does not change at all. It's the second one that's now going to change. So two threes means I pull a three out of the deck and then another three. So the first three, there were four out of 20. So now I'm holding that three and I'm not replacing it. So now the second three, how many threes are left in the deck? Out of, yes, 19 cards, great. Okay, so again, to address the question that was asked before, which was great, we assume that we had success with the first one. Okay, then we assume that the card I'm holding and looking at is a three. And so that affects the second one. Okay, so now four times three is 12. And then I'm dividing 12 by 20. And then I'm going to divide it by 19. And I said, let's round to the fourth decimal place just because these numbers get sort of small. And that's 0 0.0316. So about a, th a little more than a 3% chance that that's going to happen. Any questions about three out of 19? We're doing okay. I know that these second events, they can sometimes get a little confounding. So please let me know. A lion and then a monkey. Okay, again, the probability that I draw the lion does not change. There's five lions out of the deck. I am now standing with a lion card in my hand. Now, my monkey. How many monkey cards are left in the deck? Still five. I've not taken, I've not touched the monkey cards. But now, how many cards are left in the deck? All the second one on this one's going to have 19 in the bottom because we're taking that first card and we are not replacing it. We're holding it in our hand. So the, all of these will have a 19 in the bottom. Yes, that is a great observation. Does everyone understand why for my two threes, this, the numerator changed, but for my lion and then the monkey, the numerators did not change. Are we good with that? Okay, five times five is 25. 25 divided by 20 divided by 19 is 0 0.0658 when we round to the fourth decimal place. So frog and a yellow bird, this is going to behave very similarly to the lion and the monkey. The probability of the frog, there's five frogs out of 20. Now, I'm holding the frog in my hand, okay? I'm looking at the deck. I'm going to draw again. How many yellow birds are there in the deck? Two, I've not changed the number of yellow birds because I'm holding a frog. So there's two yellow birds out of the 19. And so that is five times two is 10 divided by 20, then divide that by 19. And that is 0 0.0263. Finally, both the card, yes. For uh, the second one, would it not be flat in 19 because both the lion and monkey had five cards, but you took one of the, of the second cards out? So let's do this. Since this is not your sheet, and, and uh, so here's my, here's my cards. You see, I know they're, they're small, but you can see them. Yeah. I draw a lion out. Okay, there's my lion. I just covered it up. How many monkeys are left? There's still five. So because this first one, this was a lion, I have not affected the monkey row at all. Okay, so that's why there's still five out of, but now I still do have 19 cards because I blacked out that one right there. Okay, great question. I'm glad, we're, glad we get uh, clarification. No, Never be shy with your questions, please. That's why we do the examples in class. So other, if you knew all this, then why would we be together? Okay, great. I'm glad it's only taken everybody 12 weeks to know that questions are cool. I love them. So please keep asking them. Okay, so that they're both even now. So there are eight even cards out of 20. That first card does not change, but now I'm holding an even numbered card in my hand. I am not putting it back in the deck. How many evens are left? Okay, this does affect because both cards I'm drawing are the same thing. Seven out of 19. And so that eight times seven is 56, I believe. And then 56 divided by 20 divided by 19 is... 
0.1474. You okay? All right, then the next problems. We're just we're just about done with this with this sheet. The next problem is example seven. I gave you a spinner with a big green space and then a little red, little yellow. And so you're going to do the same thing, do the A, the B, the C problems. Oh, before you do that, let me let me expound on something. Let's do this. Uh, let me, you don't have to write this down. There's there's a problem like this in the spinners. But let's say in the, the deck of cards that we were just using, let's say I wanted to know what's the probability of three lines. Okay, so now we're now we're drawing three cards, a line and a line and a line. So the probably the first one's a line. How many lines are there? Five out of 20. And I'm going to do this without replacing because that's what the interesting one. Okay, so we, I mean, we've already done this part. I'm holding a lion. So my second card, how many lions are in the deck? Out of? Okay, so now I'm holding two lions. What's the next one? How many lions are now left in the deck? Three out of how many cards? And you just keep going. It's the same thing every time. So if you did four or five or six. Okay, do the spinner problem, please. Okay, so when I spin this spinner, what's the probability that both are red? So it's a red and then a red. So what's the probability I spin a red on the first spin? Okay, one out of how many? Four. I know that the green space, there are three colors, but the green space is bigger. Okay, so we have to divide it up into equal parts. So a nice thing to do is, if you want to, is to draw like a little line right here and say, okay, I've got I've got four spaces that are equal sized. Okay, we have to have everything has to have equal representation. So that means that there's one chance of red out of four. Good okay, thing. That's why we're doing this problem. I want to make sure we're clear on those sorts of things. Okay, now I spin the spinner again. Playing whatever game we talked about last time. And what's the probability I get red on the second spin? One out of sure. Yeah, it's a spinner. We're not, we don't pick up the space or anything like that. It's uh it's it, in fact getting a red is gonna be one out of four as many times as you want to spin. So I've got one on the top, 16 on the bottom. Okay. Green and then yellow. Okay, what's the pro? What's that? What's the probability I've spin green the first time? Okay, two out of four or one half. Okay, because the green space is half of the circle. Times, and then yellow is? So that's two out of 16, which reduces to one out of eight. Or I think that's 0.125 if I'm remembering what one out of eight is. And then I just gave you one with three spins. So each time I spin, what's the probability I get a red? One out of four. So it's one out of four on the first spin, 
times one out of four on the second spin times one out of four on the third spin. And that is one out of, that'll happen one time out of every 64 times you spin the spinner. All right, we're just about done. I just wanted to give you different looks at the same sorts of problems so that we have lots of practice. So down at example eight, okay, I've got two probability problems. You're gonna do each of them twice. You're gonna do it with replacement and then without. Uh, so you've got four, or so you've got seven DVDs uh, on your shelf because uh, you're old school. And there's four dramas. There's two science fiction. There's one comedy, and you're selecting two at random. Okay, so you're going to do each of these with replacement, and then you're going to do them without replacement. Give a decimal. Give a fraction. It doesn't matter to me either way. Yep, you're doing each problem twice. You're doing each problem with replacement and each problem without replacement. Yes. I apologize if my the way I wrote up the problem was not super clear. All right, so I'm going to get started on these. Check your numbers with my numbers. I'm going to first do the problems with replacement. So I'm going to do each of them. So drama and comedy. So probably the drama, then I replace the DVD. I'm going to mix them up. And then what's the probability of a comedy? So the, the, the probability that I choose a drama, what's the probability of that? Okay, four out of seven. There are four dramas out of the seven DVDs. Times, I'm replacing that DVD. What's the probability it's a comedy? one comedy out of the seven DVDs. So that is four out of 49. If you gave a decimal, then it looks something like 0 0.0816. Two comedies, okay? So I put my hand in the bag or the shelf or wherever these DVDs are, what's the probably the first one's a comedy? One out of seven again, yes, times. Then I put the, I'm doing this with replacement. I put it back in. What's the probably the second one is a comedy? Yeah. Yep. One out of seven again. So that is one out of 49. And if you gave a decimal, one divided by 49 is 0 0.0204.
All right, so now we're going to do the same two problems, but this time we're not going to replace the chosen DVD. So again, my drama that probably doesn't change, it's four out of seven, but now I'm taking that DVD, I'm going to watch it. It's in the DVD player, and I go back to the shelf, and I'm going to choose at random. So how many comedies are left on the shelf? One out of six. Yes, great. So that's four out of 42, which you can go ahead and reduce. Uh, or if you gave a decimal, it looks like 0 0.0952. So you can see the probably goes up a little bit from if you're doing it with replacement. Two comedies, all right. So I, again, my, my probably the first one's a comedy does not change. The comedy is in the DVD player. I go back to the shelf. What's how many comedies are left on the shelf? There's none. There's none out of six. Um, so that is zero. That can't happen because there was only one comedy on the shelf. So you can't draw two. Excellent. 